Hey, good morning, everyone. It's another time on uh, Fireplace Talk with me. Uh, you notice I, well, I used to call it fire, fire chat, uh, fire side chat, right? But Fireplace Talk is what was originally in my mind, in my heart. That's what the Holy Spirit put in my heart. But, you know, trying to make it look like uh, uh, Franklin Delano uh, Roosevelt, I kind of tweaked it to uh, fire, fire side chats. And, uh, but fireplace talks has just been what's been in my heart. And that's just the way the Holy Spirit clicks to this. And uh, I'm just gonna submit to the Holy Spirit. And I've already changed the name on, on Facebook and that's just where we're gonna roll. It's fireplace talks. That's where the Holy Spirit wants it. And that's the way we're gonna do it. So you all welcome, welcome to my place. Welcome to my fireplace. And uh, these are our third time goal. On this, you know, the first week we did a, an introduction to this and we said what it was on. Uh, it's just me, just spotting, me bonding. I'm a teacher. I'm just gonna come here every Saturday, 7 a.m. Houston time, 8 a.m. Washington time, and uh, 2 p.m. Uh, back in Nigeria and West Africa, you know, and I'm just gonna bond. I'm a teacher, I'm gonna bond as a teacher and hope you get you get blessed as I connect you to the throne room. And uh, I started with this topic, truth and love. You know, the first week, I, first Saturday, I, I, did, I did an introduction in that. You can find that on YouTube. And second week, uh, which was last week, I came in and we talked about what is love, right? We're talking about what are the things that demarcate, separate, help you to understand, to know the church of Jesus Christ. Right, Jesus Christ said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Right, he said, I will build my church, meaning that not all churches are his. Right, the only the church that he builds is his own. Right, because some a place calls itself a church doesn't make it a church. Jesus Christ says, I will build my church. So, how do I recognize the church of Jesus Christ? Right. We have the spirit of the Antichrist very much alive with us today. And they call themselves churches also. The question is, how do I demarcate the church of Jesus Christ from a cult, right? Back home in Nigeria, we used to have different Jesuses, right? We used to have Jesus of Oyibo, right? I grew up knowing Jesus of Oyibo and was rich. Right, he had bakery, he married a lot of wives, he had a lot of children. Even one of them used to attend the, the church I, I used to be and that I know. He even had children with his own children, right? But he was rich, he was blessing people. People crowded around him. They called him Jesus for Igbo, right? Is that Jesus Christ church, right? How do I distinguish? How do I differentiate? How do I mark out? The Church of Jesus Christ. Thanks, and for coming along. Love you. Uh, how do I de demarcate, especially in these times, these last days? How can I differentiate? How can I demarcate for myself the Church of Jesus Christ from a church that is not Jesus Christ, right? And that's just what we'll be, we've been talking about here, and uh, we've been uh, taking, we, we, we looked at basically two scriptures here in our outline. And the first one is Jesus Christ tells us in um, John 13, verse 35. He says that by this shall all men know that you are mine. You are mine. This is the way people will separate you out and tell whether you belong to me or you don't belong to me, right? He says, John 13, 35. How would men know that you belong to me or you don't belong to me? And he says, is by love, 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 love. And that itself needs a definition. That's why we spent 30 minutes last week to talk about different aspects of what love is and what love is not. Because that gets confused, right? We, we, in, in different places where people would say, oh, you don't love me, is this. You don't love me, is that. And we ran through the whole perimeter of that. Love is God. If your love cannot be defined by the person of God, it is not love. Love is God. God is love. Love is only finds his, his definition, his fullness, his description in the person of God. 
God is good. God is not nice. Niceness is not God. It's niceness is not love. God is a good God. He's not a nice God. Right? Sex is not love. Sex is an act of selfishness by two people trying to come together. Right? In the overlap, you might find love, but sex itself is not love. Right? So we need to understand what love is. And, and that is out there in YouTube. You can go find it and help yourself. But if your church cannot be defined by the person of God, you are not in a church, or you are in a cult. You are in a garden of demons. So help yourself. Right? And we went on even before that, we described the fact that the demarcation of, of, of a church, because we go to the next scripture, we looked at John 17, 17. And Jesus Christ says, by this, that he was praying to the Father in John 17, 17. And he said, ah, God, demarcate, sanctify, separate out. Right? Uh, you, you, your church, your people. Right? By the truth. The truth. So that's the second one we looked at. The truth. So we say that a church is a, it's not a church unless he has a Godhead inside. Right? Because God is love. Right? Jesus is the truth. Truth is a person. Truth is not just truth. Truth is a person. That person is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The spirit of the Son. And it's the Holy Spirit. So you cannot find the three of them in your church. You are not a church. Oh. You are a call to. You are not the church of Jesus Christ. You can be any gathering. But not the church of Jesus Christ. For you to be the church of Jesus Christ. You have to have the Godhead. The Godhead. The Godhead. The Father. The Son. And the Holy Spirit in you. Representative. You have to have love. You have to have truth. You have to have spirit. Three things that will mark out you whether you are a church of Jesus Christ or not. Right? So let's dig further. Right? We, we spent a, a long time talking about love last, last week. This week I'm going to dig in and talk about uh, love and truth. Right? And this, this talking about truth is a big one. Big one. Right? I could talk about love in one week. We're talking about love, truth. Wow. 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 The Father introduces the church. The Spirit carries the church. Or the truth is the mainstay of the church. So I don't know how long we're going to stay on this truth. We're going, we're going, I'm going to give the first delivery here, but it's expanding so much in my heart. I don't know how long we're going to do it, but we'll do it for as long as the Holy Spirit opens the word. But today I'm going to give the first delivery. Of what is truth? What is truth? What is truth? You know, it, it, I, the first place we start from is the, that very same scripture, John 17, 17. And we look again at the word sanctify, you know, and I spend the time going through all the translations you have in the Bible way, Bible gateway, right? The online Bible. And I looked at everything and not, about more than 95% of, the, of them use the word sanctify, right? A few of them use some variations of the word sanctify, right? Some of them will use the word make them only. Right, they will say, make them clean, make them yours, make them ready. Right, he's saying that use the truth, right, to, to make them ready, to make them holy, to make them clean. Right, another translation will use the word, hallow them by the truth, hallow them, make them holy, hallow them, separate them by the truth. Right, another translation will use the word, set apart, set your own apart. And that goes back to, to the very meaning of the word church, right? The people that are set apart, set apart, set apart. <laughs> if you are not set apart, you are not the church of Jesus Christ, right? If we cannot find a demarcation between you and the word, there's something wrong with you. You are not the church of Jesus Christ. Yes, the church of Jesus Christ is here to affect the word, to, 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 to be a blessing to the world, to be the salt, to be the light. But it's not to be lost in the world. It still has to be set apart, set apart, demarcated, set apart, demarcated, set apart, demarcated, set apart, demarcated, set apart, demarcated. 
If you are not, you are not the church of Jesus Christ. You are something else, but not the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ is set apart by the truth, right? You know, another translation of, of, of John 17, 17 which was consecrate them, consecrate them. It's consecrate my own, consecrate the church. Don't let them be lost. Let them be found. Let them be, be, be you can mark them out in, a, in the midst of a crowd. You can say, hey, that one is the church. That one is the church. But if I cannot see you, I cannot demarcate you in a crowd. You are not in the church of Jesus Christ. There's something wrong with you. There has to be a mark on you, a mark on you, a mark on you. Something that separates you and I say, hey, this one is a, is a church of Jesus Christ, right? Because that's a prayer of Jesus Christ to the Father, right? It's the, another translation we use the word dedicate them, dedicate them, dedicate them, dedicate them, dedicate them, right? Another translation we use the word immerse them, hakatu, immerse them, immerse them, right? So if you are not any of these, you are not the church of Jesus Christ, though, right? John 17, 17, right? I, I, I will, let's go deeper. What is truth? What is truth? What is truth? So stay with John 17, 17, and we, we, we still see a direct answer there, right? It says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So the word of God is truth, right? What is the, who is the word of God? John 1, 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word, Hakabosha. Hey, in the beginning was the word, Kabosha. Jesus is the word, right? The word is the truth, right? We see the same thing in John 14, 6. It says, just Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? So we see all that re re reference there. Jesus is the truth, right? Truth is not just truth. Truth is a person. So if a person of Jesus Christ is not found in your church, you are not in church, or you are a cult. You are a cult. You are a cult. For you to be the church of Jesus Christ, you have to have the truth. You have to have Jesus in your church. If Jesus is not in your church, you are not the church of Jesus Christ. You are not going to heaven. You are not in the path of life. You are not a part of the kingdom, right? You have to have Jesus. Jesus is the truth, right? He is the truth in person, right? And there's no truth outside Jesus Christ. And this is not just a religious step, right? I have the privilege of being a coach, a counselor, a therapist. So I work across a broad spectrum, right? When we talk about truth, we're talking about truth in spiritual terms. We're talking about truth in psychological terms. We're talking about truth in physical terms. Jesus is in all spectrum. Any place, any study where anything can be called truth, it has to tie to Jesus Christ. So generally we say that all truths, all, all, A-L-L, -L, all truths are parallel. True truths never, truth never fight against each other. All truths are parallel. Why? Because they are Jesus. They are, they are, they have congruency. They find their source and placing in a person. Jesus is not in disagreement with himself. So when people start talking about gray area, it's a gray area, it's a gray area. You are lying now. If you cannot find commonality in the word of God, in the word of God, in the word of God, someone is a cult, another one is a church. You, it is not your own truth. It is the truth, the truth, the truth. There's only one Jesus Christ, though. There's only one Jesus Christ, though. It is not your definition. It is what it is. If your windows are dirty, go clean your window. There's only one interpretation of the word of God. There's no Catholic interpretation. There's no Anglican interpretation. There's no CNS interpretation. There's no redeem interpretation. There's only one interpretation. It is Jesus. Jesus is not two. Only one Jesus. I'll give you a personal example. You know, I, 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 I didn't go to University of Benin, right? So I, I came into University of Benin. Well, I was admitted to Benin in 84. I felt ill. So I, I, I deferred my admission to 85. And I came in 85 and I met 
a brother at the student union at the student center who belonged to the Christian union. And that's how I got into CU uh, while in University of Benin. But then I, I did observe a disparity, right? This was back in 1985, right? There was a disparity. There were the Christian union, right? Which was a big organization, uh, which everybody seemed to melt into. But they were the conservative ones, right? Then we had other groups, like obviously we had the deeper life, right? Uh, which are extra, ultra conservative, right? Then we have the people like the Wood Foundation, right? Which were like freer, right? They were not, they didn't have all these entrapments that we, we owe to ourselves in the conservative uh, movement, right? And uh, we had the Wood Foundation. We also had what today people call Christ Embassy right growing then they used to be called youth for christ right and uh i had friends all over <laughs> you know I, 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 somehow god is giving me a jovial spirit where I, I i make friends without reservation so i had friends in deeper life i had friends in cu which i belong to i had friends in ford foundation i was close to the sister of the of, of a leader i had friends in youth for christ which now is christ embassy, embassy love world you know I had friends all over i didn't have restrictions you know but what baffled me in all of that going to university was why are they all different why do they all believe in different things right and the ceo would say hmm, those people in world foundation they have missed christ huh? they have gone from greece to grass Huh? Look at them putting makeup on and all of that. Today, all those people in CU are doing the same thing. Of. But in school, then it was, ah, they are falling from grace to grass. I remember a sister that left the choir and see you. She went to World Foundation, man, and she had max big she ever did it, right? But my young mind then used to worry me. Do you have more than one Holy Spirit? <laughs> Just one Holy Spirit, you know? Years back today, and I just see that there's a whole lot of foolishness and lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. And we are all running after the wrong things. <laughs> Ephesians 4 tells us the reason God has called people into ministry is to help to clear away these differentiations. But these people God has called into ministry are about doing their own thing. They are building empires. Ephesians 4 says God has called Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the work of the ministry. That is why he's called them, the work of the ministry. To prepare the saints, to make them mature, 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 that they will not be driven away by every wind of doctrine. It is not to carry a bus to lose that wearing masculine dressing. It is not to be father, mother, building kingdom unto yourself. It is not to have three jets and thinking of buying another yacht. You have missed God, though. You have missed God. You are going to hell. Hell. Hell is your portion. Because you are not doing the work that he has called you to. It is for the work of the ministry. It is to prepare the saints for the work of the ministry. It is to take away the differentiations. It is not to enrich yourself. It is not to make yourself popular. Do the work, do the work, do the work, do the work. Help the church to grow. Help the saints to grow. Help people to find their own calling. It is not putting people under and father, mother, all of this stupidity that we carry around in the church. That is not the church of Jesus Christ, though. And it's weeping for his church. There is only one truth, is the word. There's only one truth, is Jesus Christ. If your church cannot be defined by Jesus Christ, if your church cannot be defined by the word of God, you are not the church, you're a cult. Even if you have a word, that word has to be best place. Best place above all things else. If it's not first place, if it's not above everything else, you're not a church. You are not a church. So I might as well tell you the truth. Fortunately or fortunately, it's me telling you. You are not a church. You are a cult. 
and you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. You and the people you are carrying along with you. If your if your if your place cannot be defined by the word of God, you are wrong. Bro. You are wrongly placed. Bro. So even God Himself, Psalm 138, verse 2. God says he has placed his word above his name. Oh, God. If God has placed his word above his name, who are you now? Who are you now? You're calling yourself a church, and the word is not first place in your, in your midst. He is prophet. That is first place. It's prophecy. It's a book. Huh? It's some other vision that is ahead of the word of God. You're not the church. So let's start naming them. Right? Today, I'm going to probably offend a lot of people, right? Right? If you are the Catholic Church and the Pope is above the word of God, you stop being a church. You're a cult. You don't go to heaven. If any practice you are doing in your midst is not in accordance with the word of God, you cannot find origin in the word of God. And you are depending on something else. You are not a church. You are a cult. You're not going to heaven. You're going to hell. Right? If you are the Mormon church and it's the book of John Smith or whoever he is that is above the word of God, you're a cult. You're not going to heaven. You are doing something other than God would have you to. Right? Stay in the word. Stay in the word. It's not what feels right. To. We're not talking about feeling here. We're talking about the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. If your doctrine, your practice, your thought, Cannot be found in this word of God. You're not a church. You're a cult. You're not going to heaven. You're about your own thing. God has already forsaken you. Better find your way back to the word of God. If you are a Jehovah witness. And you are depending on what someone said. Other than the word of God. I don't care how righteous you are. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how much labor you do. Going from house to house. It's put in tractor. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. If your practice is not in alliance with the word, you are a devil. You are doing the devil's business, or not God. You are deceiving yourself. Better find your way back, back to the word, the word, the word. It's not Jehovah's Witness truth. It's not Catholic truth. Only one truth. His name is called Jesus. 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 And it's the word. It's the word. The word. The word. Get yourself back. Right? If you're in church and you're saying that homosexuality is right, you are in you are a devil, a demon. Now I love homosexuals. I love them. I love transgenders. I love lesbians. Whoever you are, you have a right to, to be who you are. I love you. I will campaign for you. I will support your right. I haven't come out to come to on your parade and do parade for you. I have no problem with that. Too. But when you begin to mix your selfish uh, or whatever your, your blend is with the word of God, I have a problem. There's no homosexual Christian. There's no lesbian Christian. There's no transgender Christian. As far as the word of God is concerned, you are a sinner. Don't start saying, oh, every reason you see that, if you kill you, you see that. You, uh, that's not what we're talking about. Let's talk about you for now. All right? You have a right to be a sinner. There's no problem. I am a friend of sinners. I will be your friend. I will help you. I will support your cause. Nobody can, can deny you your rights. Because you have a right. Right? God has given you free will. And you can choose to be whatever you want to be. You don't want to be a, a pedo, pedophile or whatever. You have a right. And I will support your right. But please, don't bring your right to adulterate the truth. That's where I will have a problem with you. You cannot adulterate the truth. The truth is the truth. You can choose to be whatever you want to, and I will support your right to. But when you start saying that you are that your right and a Christian, then we have problem, right? Because anything that the word says is not true, is not true. Everything, whether you are this thing, is all sin as far as the word of God is concerned. I'm not talking about the legal, whether the United States or America or Nigeria says that you are lawful or not. We're not talking about whether it's lawful or not, whether it's legal or not. All we are saying is, does he agree with the truth? That's all we are saying, the truth. 
the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. And it's not your truth. It's not my truth. The truth, the word of God, the person of Jesus Christ. That's all I have to say, right? If your life does not agree with this, you're not a Christian, no. You're a cult. You're not going to heaven, no. You're a cult, right? This is the truth. This is the only thing, sure thing, you can live your life by. When you live your life by this, everything will be in congruence in your life, right? You will get the fullness of life. When you leave yourself outside of this, you sure not going to heaven for one. Yeah, you might survive being here. But you're not going to heaven. You're not of God. You're not of Jesus Christ. You're not the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ is defined by this, the word of God. Not any prophecy. You know, people say different. Oh, God told me. Oh, God said this. I had a dream. I saw in the Gabriel. I saw in the Michael. I saw in the whatever. Yeah, 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 oh, no. There's no other truth other than the word of God. I don't care even if you speak God face to face. Right? That is what he defines his church by. The truth. And that's Jesus Christ's prayer. John 17, 17. Lord, he messed them. 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 Consecrate them. Separate them. How? Allow them. Allow them. Mark them. Dedicate them. By the truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17. Right? And that's what I, I, I come to share with you this morning. Right? And feel free, like I say again, it's not me just talking, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately, I'm able to just, uh, I can't do this. I'm looking at questions at the same time. If there's something I've said that you have a question on, feel free. Yeah, there will be comment section will come live on YouTube. This has been streamed here on all my Facebook channels. Um, I mean, Facebook channels that have to do with uh, this kind of activities. I have, this is coming on YouTube. And this is coming to you also on Twitter. It's coming also to you from my webpage, right? It's www.uncolarkin.com. And so I have live stream going on, on my webpage also. And hopefully I'm gonna get also on Instagram. You just need to get that fixed up. I will be on Instagram also every Saturday. So I get to come to you every Saturday for 30 minutes here. And uh, just share, share. I'm a teacher again. I say I bond. I just see it in bond, and hopefully we can all learn together. Learn together because you can ask me questions, right? Uh, you can go on any of those streaming channels, put in your questions or whatever, and I would answer you either by writing or one of these sessions will, will address your case, right? And so this is not just a one way traffic, communication is two ways. I talk, you talk, and we'll come to a common understanding because I'm not just here to be popular. I'm not just here to show up, right? It's costing me something to do all of this. I'm doing it because that's what the Father wants. And he's chosen me as one to be the one to spend this time with you. And I have, <laughs> it's a blessing. You know, I don't do this for free. He blesses me, right? And I'm happy to do it, right? So help me, help me help you. If you have any question and anything I've said, anything you think I didn't say well, feel free. Send me a question, send me a note, and we'll uh, address your specific issue. Uh, I have two more minutes to go here, so let me just close by saying, also on Sundays, we get to do a book club, right? We, we're studying this book right now, The Four Purposes of, uh, of Life by Dan Millman. You know, it's just something we're using to learn about life. So we we'll, we'll do a book club, right, a virtual book club. And we get to do this and stream it also. So it's streamed on every channel, like you're getting this one right now. And you can so same time tomorrow, every Sunday, you can join us in our book club. Uh, it'll be our fourth delivery tomorrow. We, we've done an introduction overview. We started a 10 week um, reading into that, into the book uh, last week. So tomorrow is going to be our second time, will be your second part. Second of three parts in chapter one. So if you can get the book, awesome. If you can get it, still come along. Well, you don't need really need a book for all that we're going to be sharing. So if you get the book, fine. If not, still come along and you'll learn a lot. Your life will never be the same. I can promise you that. I promise you that, right? Your life will never be the same. Your questions will be answered. 
right? That I can promise you. So join me tomorrow and uh, we'll have an awesome time together. Thanks, Anne, for still with me. And thanks everyone on all my streaming channels listening to this either directly or next or after recording. Well, I love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> And I just want you to progress. I want you to be the very best God wants for you. And that's the only reason we're doing this. See you at the same time next week and see you tomorrow for if you are interested in the book club. We also do a prayer Monday to Fridays. If you can, join us. God bless you.